Welcome back. In this video, I'm going to talk about quantitative techniques that you need to know about in portfolio management. So I'm going to start off discussing uh, the concept of an efficient portfolio, what that really means. And then we'll talk about the calculations you need to know as we get into managing a portfolio. And then we'll walk through one example and talk about the portfolio's efficiency. So let's get going. Okay, so what do we need as an objective for a portfolio? Well, quite frankly, when we talk about an objective, what we're really looking for in portfolio management is an efficient portfolio meaning that the portfolio has a high risk adjusted return. And there's a lot of ways to measure this. Uh, the most common way or the most popular way I like to measure uh, an efficient portfolio is by using that sharp ratio we talked about, uh, you know, less, you know, a, a week ago. Remember our sharp ratio is nothing more than the return on an asset minus a risk free rate divided by the volatility or risk of the asset. So in a portfolio context, we're just taking the portfolio's return, subtracting the risk-free rate. So in this case, it's probably going to be like a 10 year T note and then divide by the standard deviation of the portfolio. Easy enough. Okay. So how do we calculate the return on a portfolio? Well, this should be a refresher, but you know, just to refresh your memory, uh, the way we calculate the portfolio return or R sub P, is by taking the weights of every asset in the, port in the portfolio and multiplying them by the return on those assets. So it's really just weight of asset or stock one times the return of stock one plus weight of stock two times return on stock two, et cetera, et cetera. And just summing up those, those products, easy enough. Now these weights, uh, typically we calculate the weight as the percentage of the portfolio invested at the start of the period in that asset. So let me just give you an example. If you start the period with a portfolio consisting of $5,000 in Apple stock and $10,000 in Google stock, your portfolio weights would be, well, the weight of Apple in that portfolio is going to be 5,000 divided by the total of 15,000 or 33% or one third. And the weight of Google is going to be the remainder, just 10,000 divided by the total of 15,000 or 66 or 67%. So that's how we get our weights. All right, next, you need to know how to calculate covariance or you need to know what it is. Uh, so covariance is the degree to which two assets move together. It's basically the, I mean, if we want to think about it this way, it's the expected deviation of the returns uh, from their means. So, you know, are, you know, in each time period, we're going to have a different return. We have an expected return or an average return, and we're just taking the, you know, the actual returns in each period minus the average returns and taking the product of those. Uh, eh, quite frankly, uh, this isn't a stats class. You should know this formula, but in most of what we do, we're going to use Excel to just calculate this. Uh, it's important to know that uh, when two assets are independent, in other words, you know, they, their returns, uh, do not move together, then covariance is going to be zero. If we have two firms that are in a particular industry, like the tech industry, so think like Alphabet, aka Google and Apple, uh, those stocks are typically going to have positive covariance indicating co-movement. So when Apple's returns are high, Google's returns are likely to be high and vice versa. And then sometimes we'll see negative covariance, uh, indicating that, you know, the returns are moving opposite of one another. Uh, we also need to be able to calculate correlation and correlation is just a scaled version of covariance. Uh, it's bounded between negative one and positive one. And, uh, when we talk about covariance or sorry, correlation, uh, you know, this one, you know, the, the number one is going to be very important. Uh, that indicates perfect positive correlation. Uh, if we have a negative one, that's going to indicate perfect negative correlation. And most assets are going to have a correlation coefficient of between negative one and positive one. I would say that us stocks are typically going to have a correlation coefficient of, oh, between about 0.2 and 0.9 with each other. Uh, and this is how we denote it. Uh, so this is the Greek character rho. So we say row of one, two. Uh, so if we had 
the correlation between Google and Apple, we'd say the row you know, of Google and Apple or the correlation of Google and Apple. Uh, so uh, when I mentioned that correlation is scaled covariance, what I really mean is that we just take the co covariance and divide that covariance by the standard deviation of our first asset and multiplied by the standard deviation of our second asset, and that'll get us our, our correlation. So we have correlation here, covariance between assets one and two here, and down here we have the individual standard deviations of the two assets. All right, so I guess I kind of talked about this, but when we have positive correlation, this is kind of what it looks like. You know, the two assets will have returns that move with each other. This is an example of po perfect positive correlation. And this is an example of perfect negative correlation where the returns move opposite of one another. Uh, it is extremely rare to actually find n perfect negative correlation. That's kind of like the holy grail of portfolio management. If you find that, uh, don't tell too many people because uh, that is going to be very, very valuable. Uh, we'll talk about why later on. All right, now, how do we actually calculate the standard deviation of a portfolio? Well, quite frankly, it's a little more complicated than what you've seen already in this class. Uh, if we have a two-stock portfolio, this is the formula that we use. We take the weight of stock one squared times the variance of stock one, or the variance of its returns, plus the weight of stock two squared times variance of stock two, uh, plus two times the weight of stock one times the weight of stock two times the covariance between stocks one and two. Uh, if we wanted to do this not using covariance, but rather correlations, you know, it, the only change here would be that we replace our covariance with the product of standard deviation one, standard deviation two, correlation coefficient between one and two. Uh, so this is how we calculate the portfolio standard deviation. And, you know, I, we don't typically show the standard deviation between uh, three asset portfolio because this, this thing blows up as you add uh, different, uh, uh, different returns beyond just two risky returns. So uh, that's pretty much that. Uh, we will absolutely be working a lot with portfolio standard deviation, correlation, covariance uh, in class, and you're going to see it in uh, some of these, these next videos. But these are techniques that you absolutely need to know. All right, so to just kind of summarize this very short video, you need to know what portfolio standard deviation is. You need to know what the correlation coefficient is. You need to know what covariance is. And uh, we will use absolutely every single one of those in the next several weeks every single day. So with that, I'm going to conclude this video. And if you have any questions, please feel free to reach out. Thank you.